Storytelling is always king. That's all that matters to us. Hey everyone, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. My name is James, thanks for stopping by. If you're looking forward to the Batman 2 or the entirety of the DCU, hit that subscribe button because we are going to be talking about it and covering it on this channel. Let me know what you guys think of all of it in the comments down below. I read and reply to all of them. Love talking Batman and DCU with you guys. So thanks so much for stopping by. We're hoping to hit 4,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So thank you all for your support. Let's get right into it now. The Batman Part 2 has not been written, might have been written, but it's being written as we talk, and I am looking forward to Pattinson resuming his role as the Batman, taking on Colin Farrell's Oz Cobb in the Batman Part 2, and whoever else and whatever else is going to be up for grabs in that motion picture. I'll be covering that and doing more videos on that as time goes on. Can't wait to talk about Can't wait to hear more about this as well. But right now, James Gunn is doing the press tour for Creature Commandos, which drops on December 5th. And now we're learning more and more details about Batman Brave and the Bold, that being that Andy Muschietti is still behind the scenes as a director of that film, but the script isn't there yet. James Gunn isn't happy with the script, or I shouldn't say that, that's not exactly what he said, but it's not at a place where they feel like they are ready to proceed, where a Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow is ready to proceed, and the Lantern Show as well, but Batman Brave and the Bold isn't there yet. They're not quite at a place where they think that Batman film is worth making, and everything's gotta be pitch perfect before they get that into production. But that got me thinking, the Batman 2 is October 2026. And the Batman Brave and the Bold won't be 2026 because that is Supergirl, so that means 2027. So that means we're gonna go patents and possible, and I'm speculating 2027 at the earliest. There are the other films, or it could be sooner, could be later, but there are other films at play in the DCU. But let's just, for the sake of this video, to talk about this, to have a conversation about this, let's just say that Batman Bear and the Bold is ready for 2027, whether that is early 2027, summer or winter, like somewhere around there, let's just say 2027. That would have us have Pattinson in 2026, and then the new Batman in 2027, maybe even possibly at some point the third Reeves film and a Batman Brave and the Bold film being released in the same year. Now, I think that's a bad idea, but I don't think it's a bad idea to have two Batmans simultaneously in the movie theater with a year apart from each other. And I used to think that this was a bad idea. I thought this was bad business. I said, they can't have multiple Batman running around at the same time. Obviously, The Flash doesn't count, right? We had Keaton and Affleck. And look, in The Flash movie, I had a lot of problems with The Flash movie, but I thought the Batman stuff was a lot of fun. I thought Affleck stuff was fun. I didn't like the baby stuff. Was It was just too much. But the, the, the Affleck stuff I thought was fun. And then I thought the Keenan stuff was fine as well. And I thought Keenan was great. I was kind of hoping they would utilize Michael Keenan a little bit more in that movie. He wasn't quite... Like, I thought, like, the way they had Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield in No Way Home is kind of, obviously not doing the same thing, but I was kind of hoping for a little bit more of that from Michael Keaton. I just didn't think he had enough to do. Same with Supergirl. I thought she was very underutilized in that movie. But, you know, it was fun to see him on screen again, and it was fun to get more Affleck, and, and I thought it worked. But what I mean is, like, if you're going to take us in the Reeves, and then you're going to give us a different version of the DCU, are people going to be confused? And I think the answer is yes, but I think it could also be no, and it can also work to their benefit because Batman sells, right? He was a hard sell, I know, in the old DC EU, the Zack Snyder stuff, and I was actually a fan of that. I love Ben Affleck's Batman. Uh, I, I thought it was, I'm a Batman fan, okay? Just come at me. But like, I thought it was fine, but he went, they went very dark and gritty and people weren't really in love with it and they had him swear, obviously, and he used a gun and blah, 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 blah. Now you have Pattinson, which I think a lot of people like, some people find him a little bit too emo-y, whatever. And I love the down-to-earth, nitty-gritty of the Reeves verse, right? I think it works. It works very well for Batman. I think Reeves knows what he's doing with the detective stuff, and he's keeping his vill villains very, very grounded as well, and he's not going to go crazy. We're, obviously, we're not going to get, you know, the clay face we all know and love. Mr. Freeze might be a tough sell. We might get Mr. Freeze, but we're not going to get the extravagant villains that we will probably get in the DCU. Alan Tudyk is playing Clayface in Creature Commandos, and he's like a serious murderous monster in that series he says and we might get him in live action and that's going to make more sense for the dcu so we know right off the bat with creature commandos what i love about creature commandos being the first entry in the dcu is that we we know what we're getting right this is off the cuff this is the weird the weird that's what we're getting. We're getting, you know, go as wacky as you want in the DCU. As long as it's a good story and it's worth telling, they're going to bring that to us. It doesn't matter if it's grounded or not. So this is the thing. So at first I was like, you can't have two Batman. You're going to confuse people. And I think that's still possible. But if you can separate them enough, if you could tell people like, hey, 
the Reeves versus Gritty and Grounding in its Elseworlds. And then you have the DCU Batman, and he's facing off with aliens, with Clayface, with, you know, all these wacky kind of villains that you could play with there, that he's teaming up with David Cornsweet Superman, that Green Lantern shows up, or Hot Girl. You have other things that kind of tell you that he is a different Batman. I think people might actually understand what's going on, but you have to do a hard sell on Elseworlds. And James Gunn has always said in these interviews and especially now for the press tours of creature command is one thing that he loves is how dc has all these different variations and else world stories that they tell right he mentioned joker in his thing obviously joker 2 we won't talk about but he's talked about all these things and it's, that's one aspect of dc that he loves and i hope they utilize else worlds more but they have to let the viewer know that it works so i think it's going to be a good thing and it can work and can be functional let me know what you guys think in the comments down below also that if you have the grounded batman which i love but then you can have a more fantastical Batman in the DCU. Someone that could appeal a little bit more to kids, to young children. Because you don't see Batman at Halloween anymore. When I was a kid, we were all Batman for a few years. There was a few years we were all Batman. Blue, gray Batman. We were out there getting our candy with our pillows and whatnot. And we were Batman. But you don't see Batman so much. I don't, I, you know what? This year I didn't see that many superheroes, to be honest. I think the last superhero I saw was a few years ago. Black Panther was like the big one. Every once in a while you get like an Iron Man now. Spider-Man once in a while. But Batman, you know... I think Batman can really should appeal to kids and does appeal to kids, but there hasn't been one for him since, oddly enough, I think the Brave and the Bold animated show. Teen Titans Go was obviously big. but And I don't mean like kids like just go after like, you know, the Barney age crowd. I mean like get have it a little bit dark, you know, like, like Goonies style, like those 80s show, Flight of the Navigator. Like when we watched things as a kid, Ninja Turtles as a kid, they were for kids, but there was a darkness to them, a little grit to them. You know, so you felt, as a kid, you felt like you were watching an adult movie, even though it was for kids. And I think, you know, the DCU Batman has a chance to, and I'm not saying that it should be any of those. I'm not saying that. An opportunity to do something that Batman has, hasn't done since 89, maybe Batman Returns. I think, you know, after that they went, I love Forever and I mean Robin, let's be I I watched that twice a year. But like, but I think 89 Batman is the last time where Batman was like this dark, gritty character that still appealed to kids. Because I think even the Nolan stuff, it wasn't really kid driven they're fantastic films don't get me wrong but i think now you have an opportunity to play in both sandboxes and i think that's going to work and i say why not let's do it and if it doesn't if people get confused then you're in a bit of, bit of trouble but i think it's up to the marketing and up to the films to be good and to separate themselves and the elseworlds is how you play it and if dc is what you love about the elseworlds and you don't call it multiverse right you call it elseworlds and they're not going to connect they're not going to come to a head these are just separate stories that exist separately from each other you don't worry about that stuff i think you're going to have fans flocking to the theater to watch both batman both iterations of batman the serious grounded one and the fun fantastical one and someone like me who loves batman who's loved batman since he was a little kid watching the animated stuff and watching adam west i'm all in on that because i can appreciate both worlds maybe i'll prefer one to the other but i think i'm going to like them both and i'm excited to see what they're going to do with them both and so i've come to the conclusion and i want to know what you guys think that two batman can work at the same time in the movie theater and it won't be too confusing for fans as long as i keep them very separate and i think the reef stuff is and i think the reason why julian rush was changed from jonathan crane to julian rush is because we're going to get more of that wacky scarecrow type stuff in the dcu than the reeves was and they didn't want to you know cross the streams in the ghostbusters reference if you will and so they did julian rush who was kind of still scarecrow -y, but not quite but he was more of a scarecrow in a reeves verse so why bother using that name and everything if you're going to use them again in a dcu so you keep things like that separate you keep the fantastical and the fantastical dcu and you keep the ground stuff grounded and you know what and you can make a julian rush that could be an amalgamation of several villains scarecrow mad hatter whatever and I think it still satisfied the fan base in a lot of ways. Because if we're never going to see those characters anyway, why not make a new character and just combine elements of what we love about the other guys in those to begin with. Also, if you haven't checked out Holy Christmas Batman from my friend Brian Royer, link in the description below. It is a jolly good time. Those are my thoughts. Again, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. Give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, may you be the master of your own universe.